Thousands of people across Virginia find themselves torn between doing what is right and sometimes staying alive. While court systems across the Commonwealth have victim services units, there's no witness protection program. Ten on your side's Aisha Tolliver digs into the safety and court proceeding implications of not having the program. Shots was fired, and I was right in the middle. Like, I could have got killed. I witnessed them just taking an innocent person's life. For safety reasons, we will be calling this woman Jane. Jane was a witness in a local homicide case that put multiple gang members behind bars. <laughs> I still live with that fear to this day. Fear that will follow her for the rest of her life. At one of the lowest points in her life, she says she was raped by a local gang leader. There was times where I tried to make my voice heard that I was raped or I'm um, hurt. You know, this is not right and I don't want to be here. And it was turned into like he would threaten my life. After being repeatedly raped and beat, Jane says she found herself in the gang's inner circle. And after that, he would just make me do things. And when I didn't want to do it, I got punished. But when a gang member shot and killed a man in cold blood and police needed a witness to get a conviction, she decided to cooperate. I was very afraid at first. I lied and I said I didn't know anything. But then just the flashbacks of seeing an innocent person, this one person just made chaos and he hurt people, innocent people like kids. It didn't matter. And that to me mattered. Working to make sure people like Jane are safe throughout the court process is Director of Victim Services for the Hampton Commonwealth Attorney's Office, Carla Reeves. Her team ensures the rights of crime victims are protected in the court system. But in cases of gang violence and intimidation like Jane's, Reeves says getting witnesses to cooperate has gotten more and more difficult. And I've been doing this for 36 years and earlier on these things could be settled with a fight. You know, you hear the kids talk about, oh, I'm not telling snitches get stitches, but I have seen that evolve into those snitches ended up being in a casket. And that's that's the fear that you have. Reeves goes above and beyond her responsibilities when it comes to keeping witnesses and victims safe, but it doesn't always work and unfortunately can lead to the worst case scenario. I'll have that part of the story coming up after the break. Stay with us. Before the break, we brought you the story of a homicide witness. She lives with fear still to this day, even with the gang members she testified against behind bars. Carla Reeves, who helps witnesses through the court process in Hampton, says she uses all her resources to help, but it's not always enough. Reeves says they do what they can to use connections to keep people safe, but at a certain point, their hands are tied. People do get murdered as a result of their knowledge of something. After all, victim services is nothing like a witness protection program. In fact, there is no witness protection program in Virginia. Witness protection is just that. Um, you see the federal government may help you change your name, identity, move you, you never come back. We don't have that ability to do that. So unless it's a big federal case, witnesses like Jane have nowhere to turn in the Commonwealth. And Jane is just one of thousands of people across Virginia torn between doing what's right and staying alive. It's a problem Norfolk Commonwealth attorney Ramin Fadahi has made his passion project. There was an effort in the 1990s to create a witness protection program in Virginia. The General Assembly passed a statute to do that. The state police was supposed to administer it. They created a framework. The General Assembly has never, ever funded it. That means that the program has never existed anywhere other than on paper. It has never helped a single witness. In one case, Fadahi needed a witness to help get a murder indictment. He'll never forget talking to the witness's dad. I said, look, I really need him. The, the, I can't go forward with this case without him. And you know, he said, when they come for my son, are you going to let him live in your house? I felt helpless, absolutely helpless. He had to dismiss the case the next day. From that day forward, it became a personal mission of mine to try and put something into place to help people so that we can convict the people who are killing people. Fadahi isn't alone. Delegate Scott from Portsmouth put in a request to fund Virginia's witness protection program, but it was shut down. Fadahi says he'll keep fighting for the funding, and Reeves says she'll keep fighting to protect witnesses, and brave people like Jane will keep fighting 
for what's right. Even if my last breath is trying to help someone else do the right thing. Aisha Talver, 10 on your side.